Yo, what's going on, everybody? That's right. I'm fucking back. DBougie86 here again, guys. That's right. You get blessed with my presence today. It's been a while. I know. Uh, just been going through some stuff lately. Let's just put it that way. And, you know, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm going to be a little bit of announcing right now, but uh, pretty much what this is is going to be my update for everything since my last update. Pretty much everything. I may have missed a few titles. It fucking happens in these videos all the time, you know. But, uh, yeah, this sh is fucking crazy, this fucking update. And uh, I barely think I have everything in order. I didn't even, I, I used to, but I was like, you know what, fuck it, fuck it all hard, oh yeah, you know, but anyways, I'm back, you know, gonna be a lot of videos coming up, because as you know, the 31 Days of Horror is coming up, that's right, where I'm gonna be doing 31 videos all month, so... You've been wanting content, you're going to get it. And, you know, I'm going to be trying to do a lot more other content after that, of course. Uh, it's just everything going on in the world. I handle it a certain way, and then it happens. You know, you just take a break. And, you know, I was enjoying the summer. The summer was actually nice to me for once. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. So... Let's get into this, you know. Let's just get right into it because I have a lot of shit to show you. There's a shitload of fucking Blu-rays and all that good shit here. So let's just get right into it. First up, let's start with the DVDs. Picked up nothing but trouble. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, directed by Dan Aykroyd. This is actually the only film Dan Aykroyd ever did. Uh, I always kind of enjoyed this movie. It was super fun. It's kind of a nostalgic piece for me. Uh, I understand that people do not like it, though. It, it does have, like, that cartoony humor to it, if that makes sense. But I enjoy it. It's like a fucked up, wild Looney Tunes version of, like, a TCM movie, you know what I mean? And kind of better than a TCM movie. Like, you know, they try to do, like, a weird Looney Tunes shit in, uh, what's it called? The Next Generation, and that movie's yeah, that's all I'm going to say on that. But, uh, yeah, I like this. John Candy's fun in this. He plays actually dual roles. So does not Dan Aykroyd in this film. And, uh, yeah, there might be a Parents of a Penis Nose and Digital Underground. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it to believe it. Nothing but trouble. Fun movie. Uh, next up, I picked up a Scorpion release in DVD and The Candle for the Devil. Yeah, this is... A film I wanted to check out for the longest time. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, this one is directed by Eugenio Martin, though, who, as you know, you probably know him from directing, like, Horror Express, which is one of my favorite horror films of all time, actually, so I always wanted to check this one out. It has a very interesting cast in this one. It's got, like, uh, Judy Geeson in it, and, you know, yeah, it looks interesting, you know. Spanish horror. Gotta love it. Next up, I picked up a, a movie I have seen before. I actually watched this on Netflix a few years ago, and I really enjoyed it. And that's He Never Died with Henry Rollins. Uh, kind of... Uh, actually, I, if you haven't seen this, I don't want to really spoil what Henry Rollins' character is in the movie. Uh, he's pretty much an immortal cannibal. And... Uh, yeah, that's all I give away. It's kind of a dark comedy in a sense where the humor comes through the dialogue, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's fun. You know, if you haven't seen it, it actually does have an interesting take on a certain tale without giving too much away on it. If you haven't seen it, I do recommend this movie. Really enjoyed He Never Died. Next up I picked up is The Night Shifter. This is one of the Shutter exclusives. These have been coming on DVD and... Uh, yeah, I know there's Blu-rays of these, but the thing is, 
I do not like BDRs. I do have one to show you guys later on in the update, but BDRs is annoying me because, like, when they could release these films on, like, a press DVD, why not just release them on a press fucking Blu-ray, too? Makes no fucking sense. But whatever. So I just picked them up on DVD, which I actually like, too, because they actually come with slip covers too. A lot of the releases I have picked up, because I have a few of these Shutter exclusive DVDs. And, uh, yeah, The Night Shifter. This is a film I actually really enjoyed from the year when I saw it, when it appeared on Shudder. So, yeah, I really dug Night Shifter, if you haven't seen it. I think it's, like, a Portuguese film. Doesn't say, but... Yeah, Portuguese, yeah. Alright. Picked up the UK DVD of Video Man. This is a film I haven't seen yet. Heard a lot of good things about it. Uh... Yeah, it looks super interesting, and the concept of it seems super up my alley. It's a Swedish film, actually, and, you know, it's kind of like a love letter to, like, video collecting in, like, a giallo sense. It has kind of like a gialli with, like, in uh, video collecting, you know. So, that sounds super interesting as all hell to me, so, Video Man, definitely going to check that one out. Next up is a film... Uh, actually released by Full Moon, that is Wax. Uh, I actually picked this up because I actually heard a episode on this film, I believe it was the Nashi cast that did this, and, uh, the reason why they did that, well, it has a Paul Nashi, sort of. Uh, this is the final credited role of Paul Nashi in this film, he's the voice of Paul Nashi, I should say, who, uh, appears as a wax figure in the movie and it's actually his voice which is super cool and you know this film is Spanish horror love letter to Spanish horror and to those films of the cinema and you know it stars Jack Taylor the legendary Jack Taylor in this film who's actually a few of his um, a few of his movies are actually gonna pop up later in the update uh, if you don't know Jack Taylor he's in like uh, Edge of the Axe and Pieces uh, uh, female vampire, uh, to name a few of them off the top of my head. Uh, love Jack Taylor, you know, has uh, Geraldine Chaplin in it too, also Charlie Chaplin's daughter, special appearance by Lone Fleming in this movie. So you, you get a lot of like cameos and throughout it too. So yeah, this is actually from, I actually reviewed uh, this guy's second movie, the, this is actually like his debut movie. But uh, I reviewed Vampires, the remake of the Jose Larraz film. And uh, yeah, I'm going to check this one out. I heard interesting things about it. I haven't actually sat down and watched it yet. It's kind of like done in like the found footage style too from what I heard. So I'm very curious on it. So wax. Next up is kind of like an Irish giallo. And that is Three Sisters. Uh, what I'm going to also check out, you know... Uh, no, I actually heard a special podcast on this. If you're not subscribed to, uh, what's it called? What is the podcast I listen to called? I forget the name of it, but I'll think of it off the top of my head later. But they actually did like a bonus episode on their like Patreon reviews. They actually do bonus content for like their Patreon listeners. And they did a review of this movie and it sounded super interesting. And, uh, it has a certain like special guest appearance by Giovanni Lebrano Radici, which seals the deal for me. So yeah, I'll be checking this one out soon. Three sisters looks cool. Next up some more Spanish horror and I got the bell from hell. Uh, interesting aspect of this movie from the hearing about this, the director of this actually died while, uh, during like the final shot of the movie or something, it was crazy. There was some like crazy story. This I'm gonna actually had to look up to it because I actually don't really look up things for when I do updates. They're just up there, but it's like something like that. He died during the making of this movie, so that's fucking interesting as all hell. And uh, yeah, I'm curious on what's gonna go on in this one. It looks kind of weird from the story. Next up, we got Uncaged. 
I actually heard about this movie for four years now. But it wasn't called Uncaged. Uh, it was titled Prey from, you know, we watch trailers for this. It's known as Prey. It's a Dick Moss movie. It's directed by Dick Moss. So you kind of know what you're going to get into when you get into a Dick Moss movie. And uh, I've been hearing a lot of interesting things about it. I actually really enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. For what it is, you know, it's a killer lion in Amsterdam. You just gotta shut your brain off and just enjoy the ride. And this movie takes you on a ride, and it's fun as all hell. And, you know, the lion actually looks pretty good. It's actually, uh, the, the uh, CGI effects are done by the same guys who did the CGI effects on the tiger from Life of Pi. Which I found very interesting in that aspect, looking up the movie. And it was super fun. If you haven't seen Uncaged yet, check it out. It's actually, if you aren't subscribed to Shutter. It's on there. Check it out there. It's fun as fuck. Next up we got Satan's Slaves, which is sort of a remake slash prequel to another movie that's in my update. It's an Indonesian film. I actually watched this for, uh, actually my buddy Duncan from the Teapot of the Stairs, the podcast from the Stairs, did like a listener's feedback episode. Where, you know, he picks a movie and he asks all us to review it and he puts our reviews into the workings of the episode. And, uh, yeah, Satan Slaves, this movie actually kind of blew me away. I actually didn't see this, like, when it was first, like, released. And then I was kind of joined because this would have made my fucking top ten. This movie's fucking amazing. If you haven't seen Satan Slaves, I highly highly recommend this movie. It's fucking awesome. Next up, uh, as you know, uh, the next uh, year for uh, the 22 Shots top 10 list is 2005 and been picking up some 2005 movies, but the weird thing is the last one DVD I'm going to show you I actually picked up before the year was announced. So that was kind of funny. So... <laughs> <coughs> I picked up the classic Man-Thing. Man-Thing. You know, based off the Marvel comic book. I actually have seen this movie before. I don't remember it that much, though. Uh, I know it's definitely a lot different than the comic book, if I remember correctly. But, uh... Yeah, it could, that's going to be an interesting revisit for sure. Uh, next up, I picked up American Haunted. I actually just got this in the mail today. It's still sealed. Another movie I think I remember seeing. I just don't remember anything about it. That's never really a good sign. Uh, this one's got Donald Sutherland and uh, Kevin uh, Sissy Spacek in it. And Jim, James Darcy's in this movie. Wow. All-star cast in this motherfucker. Huh? Yeah, this is going to be interesting revisit to it's an after dark films what the fuck wow weird <coughs> another masterpiece right here is a sound of thunder what can i say it's a sound of thunder this movie is fucking terrible that's all i'm gonna say on that you can hear more thoughts on that later uh next up is Wild Country, which is actually the DVD I picked up for. I picked up, uh, actually, the year was picked, is what I was trying to say. Don't mind me, guys, it's late. I'm actually trying to rush through this because I got to go to work after. So, don't this is a werewolf movie that I actually used to watch all the time on Fearnet. Uh, you know, uh, in the background type movie, I used to watch it like when I was not in the mood to watch anything for sure, you know, actually, and, you know, it's a fast-paced movie, it only runs, like, 74 minutes, it's actually a lot better than you think it would be for a mid-2005's werewolf movie, and, uh, the werewolf's kind of cool looking, uh, I won't lie, it's actually very interesting looking how they did the werewolf in this battle area, so if you haven't seen it, check it out, uh, kind of a cool movie, but that's it for the DVDs. Now, on to some Blu-ray easels. 
Next up, I picked up this double feature Blu-ray of Hostel and Hostel 2. Uh, of course, these are both directed by Eli Roth. Interestingly enough, the fucked up thing is, I watched this motherfucker for the 2006 Teapot Show I was adjudicator on. Now, I gotta watch this motherfucker again for the 2005 show because it counts for 2005 the way that they do their rules. Yeah. Uh, I like the film. It's, uh, I don't want to give too much of my opinions away on it. Just in case, I'm going to revisit it. It's definitely going to be one that's going to be a way down the line because it's kind of like a heavy hitter one. I want to see some of like, the other movies from that year before I start revisiting these ones. Plus, I just watched it too. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, Hostel. I actually like part two a lot too. From what I remember, it's been a while. I know the, there's a few cameos I dig in part two. Uh, you know, got some screen factories. Like I said, these were all mixed up guys, so beer with me. Uh, actually, I have an idea. Let's get into some steel books. Steel books are so good. There we go. We'll do this so it doesn't, yeah, die on me. There we go. There we go, Red Sox. There we go. Picked up Tigers Are Not Afraid. Actually, really love this movie. Made my top 10 of the year last year. Uh, I can understand why people would not consider this a horror film. I'll just put that out there. It has, like, supernatural elements in it. You know, but the thing that I like to say, it's kind of like a real-world horror movie with supernatural tendencies or fantasy tendencies into it where the horror doesn't come from the things that you see on the screen that you would supremely be scared of in a real life situation if that actually ever happened. It's more of the real people in this movie that are the horror aspect of it. And that's the aspect of it I like because it's a very Del Toro-esque aspect. The monsters and the ghosts are not the enemies. The enemies are the humans. And that's the aspect that's real horrifying. And that's why I say Green Room's a horror movie. So fuck off with that bullshit. So Tigers Not Afraid, really love it. Fantastic film. Love it. Uh, next up, Big Trouble in Little China. Of course, I had to pick this up. One of my, my favorite John Carpenter film of all time. You knew I was going to pick up the Steelbook, bitch. Yeah, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm swearing a lot lately, guys. Oh, my me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just the way I am. And you got Victor Wong on the back cover of that bad Larry with his lazy fucking crazy eye. <laughs> He's fucking nuts. Uh, Victor Wong, I love him. Miss that dude. Uh, picked up a... Oh, this is a great one. Live and Dead at Manchester Morgue, Steelbook. One of my favorite movies of all time. Love it. Great release. One of the greatest 70s zombie movies ever. It's fucking awesome. Uh, all right, I guess we get into some uh, Scream Factory shit. Uh, Curse of the Werewolf. Yeah, what can I say? Uh, actually, just did a show on this. So if you want to hear my thoughts on it, check out that show. That's a good plug. Should be out later this week. So check that out on the Dark Discussions Network. Oh, yeah. Picked up Session 9. I love this movie. This movie's actually always intrigued me because it takes place in Massachusetts. Danvers Mental Hospital is like traveling like it's like a 20 minute drive from where I am right now. That's fucking creepy. You know, and just the fact that this movie was made there is even creepier. You know, they actually filmed in Danvers. Uh... Yeah, I, this movie's the one that I... It grows on you on rewatch. It definitely does. I can see if you watch this for the first time, and you're like, what the fuck was that, you know? You know, but... Uh, this movie's fantastic, in my opinion. I, the great performances. David Caruso, Peter Mullen are fantastic in their roles. Brad Anderson is a guy I wish would do more movies. 
He's done a few of them. Uh, actually, his first movie was like a romantic comedy called Next Stop Wonderland, which is actually funny because Wonderland Station is like the blue line of train system of Boston. You know, it's kind of funny in that sense where, you know, a lot of his early like films were like set in Boston and Mass and stuff and set in different uh, parts of the world. And Wonderland's kind of a cool setting for a romantic love story. And Danvers Mental Institution is definitely great for a horror film. Uh, what's left of it anyway. It's not, most of it's not there anymore. But uh, Session 9, highly recommend this. And, you know, really good release by Scream Factory. Good shit. Picked up The Lost Continent. Also did this on that same Hammer show that's coming out. So if you want to hear my thoughts, hear my thoughts. But, uh, weird movie. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, do I have any more screen fans? Yeah, they're all mixed up. So bear with me, guys. It's going to be kind of like a Russian roulette of movies this time around. Uh, next up, I have Female Vampire by Jess Franco. Love. Love the Female Vampire, uh, which I don't know if that's a bad thing. Uh... Yeah, it's fucking fantastic, in my opinion. It's great. Uh, it'll not be for everyone. Very erotic, if that makes sense. But if you were looking for a good time and a good Friday night, go with Female the Empire. Speaking of Jack Taylor, he's actually in that movie. Uh, picked up two retro video releases. First up, I picked up Death Occurred last night. This is kind of like a giallo mixed with like a... Italian crime movie, like a... What the hell is that? Poligo Teschi, or whatever they called. That's what the term for, the, you know, like the cop, Italian cop movies. That's what this kind of is. It's kind of like in that era where they started to blend, like, genres together and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I haven't watched this. This one's from uh, Ducio Tassari, who's a director who did, like, the blood... A lot of his Gialli that I have seen are very interesting and very different. Like the Bloodstained Butterfly was like a courtroom drama giallo. It was fucking weird. But uh, yeah, I'm very curious on this one. So we're going to check that one out soon. And I picked up Killer Cop, which is a straight Pelagio Teschi film uh, from uh, Luciani Coli, who did a few of my favorite giallo. And I actually have, I think a few of them in this update, so you'll be seeing like at least one or two of his movies that he did in this bad Larry. But yeah, Killer Cop, haven't checked it out yet. So stoked to check that out. Picked up Starfish from, uh, what is this line called? This company, Altered Innocence. The same company that put out like, uh, what's it called? Uh, where did they fucking put out? Uh, Knife Plus Heart. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, yeah, Starfish is a very interesting movie, like a one-woman show. Uh, great performance by the main lead in this film. Uh, I can see why it, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, though, this movie. But uh, I really liked it. Yeah, loved it. Kind of liked it. It's kind of like my type of movie, post-apocalyptic setting. And, uh, yeah, now on to something completely different. We got... Life and Death of a Porno Gang. Yes, uh, the other Serbian film. <laughs> uh, haven't watched this yet, but from what I see from the back cover, yeah, it looks great. looks awesome. Can't wait to watch that. Uh, oh, I got another DVD in here. Of course, I messed up. I also picked up Ruin Me from that uh, Shutter exclusive. This one... Actually, a little fun slasher. I actually really enjoyed this one. Uh, dug the shit out of that, actually. We got Dead Dicks from Arsplatation. Uh, haven't watched this yet. I actually was sent to me to review. I had to actually review this one. And, you know, you know, the 31 Days of Horror sounds like a perfect time to review it, so I will. So I'll be checking out uh, Dead Dicks. What a title for a movie. Uh, <laughs> picked up Abracadabra, which is the newest film from uh, the Onetti brothers, Luciano and Nicholas Onetti. Really dug this movie. Uh, very 
spellbinding and abstract yellow. Uh, the thing I like about the Onetti brothers, all their films feel different. And uh, this one's no exception. And, you know, I love that fucking poster art. It looks fucking awesome. Yeah, really cool film. Picked up Perfect Strangers, which is actually a Larry Cohen film that i never seen. Uh, it feels, feels like it's more like a neo-noir film, though. You know, Vinegar Syndrome has been putting out some very interesting titles lately. And this one's like a 84 Larry Cohen film. Yeah, I'm going to check that one out soon. Perfect Strangers. Speaking of some noir, I picked out Out of the Past with Robert Mitchum. This is a oldie but goodie. This is from the same guy who did The Cat People, Jacques Tonor. Yeah. Who, uh, you know, fantastic director. You know, he did like... Uh, Night of the Devil, you know, some other, or Curse of the Devil, depends on what country you're from, uh, goes by both those titles, but, uh, yeah, this film is one that I always wanted to see, with Robert Mitchum, Kirk Douglas, Jane Greer, I love old cinema, I love film, and, you know, gotta see it on their best quality, so, very stoked to check out Out of the Past, some, some noir shit, more, uh, well, now into something completely different. Old Dracula, David Nevin from Vinegar Syndrome. No idea what I'm in for. I haven't watched this yet. Another one I haven't watched, but uh, I think I'm in for a ride. That's for sure. Okay. Oh, I actually have all the Mondo Macabros I picked up. Ideal Place to Kill. Umberto Lindsay. Come on. It's Umberto Lindsay. Of course, I was picking that up. Picked up uh, The Devil's Nightmare with uh, Erica Blanc. Oh, I love her red hair. Mm. And The Devil Incarnate with written, directed, and star Mr. Paul Nashi. Uh, heard about this. I heard it's like one of his best movies. So that got me intrigued. That's, a, that's some big words to say when you, you hear people say that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to be checking this one out. Fucking Devil Incarnate. Oh, some more Jess Franco up in this bitch, huh? We got Dr. Orloff's monster. Uh, some early day Jess Franco. Yeah, Jess Franco. Love his old black and white stuff. So good. Uh, picked up uh, Neurosis, which is kind of like one of the later uh, Jess Franco day films. Uh, Lino Ramey, uh, Howard Vernon's in this one. Revenge in the House of Usher, this was also known as. Uh, interesting note. This is not the actual Spanish cut of the movie. This is actually the French and American cut of this movie. Which I found out through a little digging in history. Uh, they actually spliced a lot of scenes from the Doctor awful Dr. Orloff and flashback scenes in this to kind of make it connected to that movie when it wasn't, when it was originally filmed. So it's weird that they did that. For I think it was the producers. I don't actually think it was Franco himself. But uh, I'm curious to still check this cut out, even though I do know that fact about it. So, yeah. Some fucking Jess Franco up in there. But I think I have one more Franco in this somewhere. We got Best Friends from uh, Verga Syndrome. More exploitation. It kind of looks like a revenge movie. I could be totally wrong, though. You never know. And I picked up uh, Arrival by Dennis Villeneuve. Yeah. I love all his guys' movies. One of the best directors of this era. Period. Fucking love it. Adam Costello are fucking G's. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Uh, another exploitation ones I got a review, and that is the dead ones. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about this. It looks weird. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, it's from the director of Wizard of Gore, so not the Herschel Gordon Lewis one, the remake of that movie. So it could be interesting because I remember that movie kind of being kind of different and cool. But that's all I can remember. It's been a while since I saw that one, too. But, uh, yeah, Dead Ones. I'm going to check that one out, too. 
Next up, I picked up Satan Slave, the original 1980 Indonesian classic. Or is it, I actually did watch this one. It's pretty funny. It's kind of like an Indonesian version of Phantasm. Even has the kid, main character, little kid with a fucking motorbike in it. Uh, and then it changes. Like, it's not fully Phantasm. It still is its own thing. But it's super fun. You can see it borrowed a lot from Phantasm, though, with the aspects of it. Which, not a bad thing, because the sequel slash prequel that I showed earlier actually, you know, showed a lot from, like, uh, what's it called? It's very influenced by The Conjurer in that one, but, you know, and this one's, it's good to see, like, they actually took different aspects of modern film of the era that they both came out in and tried to incorporate it into the film. <clears throat> Next up, we got The Descent. Actually, upgrade for me, uh, I love this movie. It's been a while. I actually uh, watched this for 2005, of course. So, stoked to check this one out. Uh, Neil Marshall film that I always loved. Uh, fantastic movie. Great cast in that one. Next up, I picked up Bad Moon. Highly recommend this release by Scream Factory, by the way. I actually just did a review of this on No More Room in Hell. Where he paired it up with uh, this movie right here. We did Bad Moon and Where, actually... I didn't pick this up. This was I actually own this already. It's actually a birthday present from my co-host Carly. That DVD of where, but uh, yeah, Bad Moon. Highly recommend this release, especially if you have an issue with a certain scene in this movie because it cuts that scene pretty much most of it out. So yeah, really good movie. I really enjoyed it. Team Thor for life. Picked up Hard Candy from David Slade. This is another 2005 film. Uh, I think this was like his debut movie that he did 30 Days a Night, like in 2007, I think. Yeah. This is weird because I actually never seen this whole movie the whole way through. I always started it and, you know, it was like a late night movie for me. And, you know, it was weird. It's a weird aspect of me watching movies. You gotta forgive me sometime, guys. But uh, Hard Candy... Stoked to check that one out, finally. Blood Games, picked this up from Vinegar Syndrome. Fucking, looks fucking awesome. I heard nothing but good things. I know my buddy Dave's a huge fan of this movie. But, uh, yeah, I'm stoked to check out some Blood Games. Fuck yeah. We got, oh, I have another DVD. I didn't look for good enough, guys. Uh, the Shed I picked up from Walmart when I was in Maine. Uh, haven't actually really enjoyed the fuck out of this. I haven't watched the DVD. I actually watched it on Shudder. Uh, yeah, fucking cool movie. I actually like that. It's like E.T. with a fucking monster. <laughs> uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Fucking Scream Factory. Great fucking release. A fantastic release, actually. Really fucking good release. What can I say? It's Scream Factory. Pick it up. You gotta pick it up, yo. You gotta pick it up. Okay. Sadistic Baron Von Kloss from Jess Franco. I think that's the last of the Francos. I pick up a lot of Jess Franco shit. Which is a problem. It is. But, yeah. Jess Franco. What can I say? Love his old black and white shit. It's fucking awesome. Picked up Death Wish 2, the Blu-ray from Shout Factory. Uh, yeah, this was actually this is actually going out of print, so I picked it up. It was cheap. It was on sale. So I said, why not? Slither. Love me some fucking Slither. Love me some Slither. Slither is one of my favorite horror films of all time. Love it. Love it so much. Love it, love it, love it. And this is a great release. If you haven't picked this up, I highly recommend this release. Picked up High Rise by Ben Wheatley. I haven't watched this yet. I actually picked this up because uh, Duncan and uh, Watson did this on Opry Omnia. That's a podcast that takes a look at one director's work. Each episode's a different film from that director. 
I actually gotta listen to the final one that they did where they actually look back on what they did for the year and for like Ben Wheatley's filmography. But uh, High Rise, it looks interesting enough. It's like a dystopian future movie, and I'm a huge fan of those. So stoked to check that one out finally. BDR of Sea Fever. See what I mean? Cheap. But whatever. I picked it up at the buy one, get one free sale in Target, so I got it for free anyways. Ha <laughs> ha. Petri- oh. Ooh. Spaghetti fingers. Petrified Forest with uh, Betty Davis, Leslie Howard, and Humphrey Bogart. This is actually the movie that kind of brought us Humphrey Bogart. He was actually a struggling actor at the time. And he was like, I think he was like 35. He was actually a little bit older and stuff. And he was struggling. And, you know, Leslie Howard wanted him for the role. And they brought him onto this movie. And he became a star. And the rest is history. Humphrey Bogart became a fucking star and a legend. Because of the Petrified Forest. Uh, great stuff. Split second. Fun-ass movie with Rector Hauer. Uh, from the MVD collection. Rewind collection. Super fun. Love this movie. Great artwork on this release by uh, the Dudes Designs who did the poster art for Hobo with a Shotgun. If you haven't re recognized that name, that's actually the same artist that did Hobo. But, uh, yeah, it's a super fun movie. I, I actually really enjoyed it for what it was. You know. You got horror from Spider Island. This movie's just fucking weird. I kind of liked it because it was weird. What else we got? The Eleventh Commandment. It's very good syndrome. Could be anything. Could be weird. Could be awesome. Who knows? Some uh, Eureka stuff. We got Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. This is pretty cool. Betty Davis, Olivia de Holland, Joseph Cotton. Uh, great movie. Really enjoyed the fuck out of that. Awesome shit. The White Reindeer, some Finnish folk horror. It looks fucking weird as all hell. It's about like a lady who turns into like a fucking vampire reindeer. I gotta watch that. That sounds like something I'm gonna review soon. <laughs> Definitely. You know, I got a few uh, criterions mixed in, of course, because I'm fucking lazy. So I wanted to show them all off. So bear with me for one sec, guys. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's the other one. All right. Everything else is the other company, the final company of the night. Uh, all right. All About Eve by Criterion. Got this during the Criterion sale. Betty Davis. She's got Betty Davis eyes. Like I said, I love all types of cinema, and Betty Davis is actually one of my favorite actresses. Pick this up. Fucking great movie. Awesome shit. Picked up Clued with Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland. I always liked this movie. Uh, it's been years since I've seen it, and I'm glad I got this fucking sweet edition of it. You know, it's it's a you know it's got Roy Scheider in it too. Uh, fucking. Uh, Awesome movie, if you haven't seen it. Clue, a great, like, crime, kind of like a giallo in a way, too. It's kind of like a mystery movie. Really good shit. Picked up Silence of the Lambs. Hello, Clarice. The lambs are coming for you. This way is this. You know, I'm not kind of a fan of these cardboard ones that they do sometimes. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Hello, fucking Silence of the Lambs. What can I say? It's Silence of the Lambs. Uh, we talked about that all during the 91 show. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, the Virgin Suicides. Sofia Coppola's debut movie. Uh, yeah, it's weird. It's pretty awesome. It's very 70s and the aesthetic of it. Uh, if you haven't seen this movie... 
I don't know if I could rec. This is a weird one to recommend to people, but I say it's at least watch it once, maybe twice, if you don't get the aspects of it. Uh, or read the book first and then watch the movie because it's based off a novel. But I enjoyed it. Speaking of movies based off novels, Naked Lunch by David Cronenberg. What can I say? Uh, everyone like, is this horror? Is this not? Where the fuck do you put this movie in your collection? Where the hell do you put it? Do you put it in drama? Do you put it in sci-fi? Do you put it in horror? You put it everywhere. It's one of those fucked up movies where you're like, I have no idea what the fuck I just watched. I don't know what genre it is. I don't know anything. This movie fucked me up. <laughs> you know, it's Naked Lunch. And no one will explain it better than William S. Burroughs himself. Fucking awesome shit. One box that I'll... Sh actually, two box sets I'll show you that I got. Because the other ones are all the last company. And I got the Planet of the Apes trilogy set. Big fan of these movies. And, uh... Yeah. Planet of the Apes. Andy Serkis kills it as Caesar. And uh, some Severin. I got the Umberto Lindsay and Carol Baker Giallo collection. You know, it comes kind of like the Vinegar Syndrome. You know, I was kind of pissed how long this took. And of course, my copy is all fucking dented up. You know, it, it, it's whatever. And, uh, yeah, it comes with Orgasmo, So Sweet, So Perverse, A Quiet Place to Kill. Not a, to be confused with, a di ideal place to kill. Wow. Uh, and then Knife of Ice. But, yeah. Lindsay. Great director. Now on to some aero video stuff. A lot of these I haven't watched yet, but been wanting to. So let's time to get rid of this. The Dream Demon. What can I say? It's about a dream demon. And I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know what it's about. But it looks interesting and weird. <laughs> so I'm going to check it out. The Fifth Chord, Great Giallo. Who directed this? I don't know. Uh, oh, uh, Luigi Bazzoni. That's who directed it. Wow. Uh, Massimo Delamo's What Have You Done to Your, Their Daughters. Uh, I always loved it because the killer is the fucking biker with a cleaver. <laughs> what can you like? Oh. Quiet Earth. Uh, speaking of uh, dystopian futures, it's kind of like end of the world movie where there's no one left on Earth. And I always dug this. I picked up the U because I got these all during like a lot of the Arrow sales that have been happening like during the summer. So I was stoked to pick this bad Larry up. Blood Tide with fucking Darth Vader and is Jose Ferrer in this too? I swear, I think so. I know Martin Cove's in this. Yeah, Jose Ferrer's in this movie, too. Fucking Blood Tide, uh, f uh, produced by Nico Macarac. So it's kind of the weird one where he didn't direct it, actually. But cool to check this one. The Pajama Girl case. I actually did a review on this on Body Bags a while ago. Uh, I actually really dug this uh, Giallo film. Crimson Peak by Del Toro. Uh, great release by Arrow. Uh, fantastic film, in my opinion. Uh, we got, speaking of Luciana E. Cola, we have uh, The Forbidden Photos of Above Suspicion, a Lady Above Suspicion. That's a tongue twister. Uh, interesting, different take on the Giallo film. I really enjoy it, of course. Edge of the Axe by Jose Ramon Larraz, uh, one of his last movies. Uh, kind of more of like a his take on the American slasher genre, in a sense. Uh, Star and Jack Taylor, of course. Uh, really awesome movie. <laughs> this one's super fun. Cheesy shit. <laughs> the Possessed, which is kind of like a... It's a Giallo, but it's more like a Krimi. Which is the Giallos that were before Giallos, if that makes sense. It's... Very interesting, of course. This one is uh, co-directed by Luigi Bizzoni and uh, Franco Rosalioni. Uh, yeah, and you know, 
Possessed. Really cool movie. I really dug that. Don't Torture a Duckling by Lucio fucking Fulci. Fantastic movie in my opinion. Deadly Manor. Another... <laughs> this movie's so fucking cheesy. <laughs> Jose Ramon Larraz. It's like one of his last movies. It's so weird and cheesy and... It's got an ending you gotta see to believe. It's like 90s... The 90s awesomeness. This movie. So cheesy. Uh, Pieces starring Jack Taylor. <laughs> uh, this is directed by G.P. Simone or Juan Pierre Simone. Uh, what can I say about Pieces? You know, I actually own three copies of Pieces. I love Pieces. So bad, it's fucking awesome. Love it. Another J.P. Simone film, Slugs. Finally upgraded this to Blu-ray. I am super stoked to watch this on Blu-ray as a, one of my favorite creature features of all time. Oh, look at that cover art. It's fucking sexy. Speaking of one of my favorite horror films of all time, Horror Express. I up, kind of upgraded again because I own the Severn Blu-ray of this. I'm just a man whore and I want to like, I'm fucking, I'm getting the arrow too. Fucking Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, and Telly. Actually, two new films that Arrow put out, and that is Why Don't You Just Die. This is like a Russian movie. I actually started this, and I was intrigued. I just had to go to work, so I'm, I'm, I got to restart this and watch this again. And finally, for like the regular Arrow stuff, I got Zombie for Sale. This is like a Korean Zomcom. Yes, and I, I guess the zombie eats ketchup. It's a zombie that eats ketchup in the movie from what I was reading from the back and reading about it. But uh, it looks funny. Uh, I'm definitely going to be watching this. So uh, it's a cool concept and shit. So yeah, I'm going to love I think I'm going to really love that movie. Uh, now onto some Arrow video boxes. Picked up the standard Blu-ray set of the films of Horace Laraz, the Blood Hunger set. Uh, comes in all slim case stuff. We got, of course, Whirlpool. Vampires. And The Coming of Sin, which I don't think is a horror film, or I think it's a porno, but they just put in the set to fuck with me, but... I'll find out. Not watching any of those for 31 days. <laughs> uh, then we got the Graveyards of Honor set. Films from Kenji Sifukusaku and Takashi Miike. Uh, super stoked that uh, the original finally got a Blu-ray, like a release. The Graveyard of Honor this is the original film. And then we have the remake by uh, Miike right here. Fucking... Yeah, I'm stoked to... I actually own the remake of this on DVD. But super stoked to got a fucking Blu-ray release too. And the one the one of the final things of this update is... Uh, Solid Middle Nightmares. The films of Shinya Tuskamoto. There it is right there. This set's fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, look at that. We got Tessio and Tessio 2. Tokyo Fist. Bull Ballet, Snake of June Vital, Kokoto, and The Killing. And it also comes with a bunch of short films that he did and stacked special features this whole set. And it comes with a giant booklet with articles like written by Kat Ellinger and all that good shit. Uh, super fantastic set. If you haven't picked this bad layer up, I highly recommend this set. Yeah, do that right now. And of course, let me grab it from over here in the corner without knocking anything over. We had the final thing to show you guys. The fucking Gamera Complete Collection from Arrow Video. A.K.A. my release of the fucking year. This thing is a thing of beauty. It fucking shits all over that Criterion Godzilla set. And 
it makes me sad to say this because you know I love Gamera, but I'm a bigger Godzilla fan by heart. This this set has like multiple dubs of every movie, different versions of every movie. Every like fucking commentary is galore on every movie. Special features they gave Dae or Kondro or Kondro or whatever the fuck the name of the company is now gave Arrow the keys to the Gamera fucking universe and beautiful artwork by a kaiju artist Matt Frank and you know it actually comes with his graphic novel which is kind of like a sequel to the third Gamera of the Gamera trilogy in a way where it's just a stack set it's actually very interesting how many people I actually know that were involved in this set well not know personally but through like talking through the internet and stuff and seeing them like uh, Kyle from the Kaiju cast is doing a commentary on Attack on Legion Matt Frank is doing a commentary on you know Steve Rifle and Ed Dijukowski does one on Revenge of Iris and just the numerous like Kaiju experts they got the guy who did the commentary for Godzilla's Revenge to do the commentary for Super Monster. <laughs> you know, it's a sad thing that this is a... They made this for us fans. And it's elegant and beautiful in that sense where I wish we had more things like this for us. If that makes any sense. But yes, if spoiler alert, this is my release of the year so far. It's fantastic. It's highly recommended. I know it is sold out, but I believe Arrow will probably be doing like a standard edition of this set later down on the line. Not sure when. I know they're actually redoing a, one of their the HDL set right now. I think that's coming out soon. I saw it on like pre-order and it's a lot cheaper than the well that one that I have over there but you know <laughs> it looks a lot cheaper anyways from the one I paid for it I, I don't know how to convert I didn't convert anything either to be fair but uh yeah that's it for the update guys I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back uh, with some 31 days of horror I got some Jess Franco's and shit to review <laughs> no I'm gonna mix it up I always do, you know me. You know, I got some 2005 stuff. Maybe I'll mix in, but I'm not sure yet. There's some fun shit that I'm gonna do. But, you know, that's all. I'll be back soon. See you in the beginning of October, guys, because I gotta get prepping for that. So, see you later. Peace out. <laughs>